Holy heck, is this a pretty cool bike. Today on this James the Bike Guy, we're taking a look at the radically redesigned seventh generation version of Trex Madone, which is their aerodynamic performance race bike. And in this video, we're checking out holes and all of this brand new frame, figuring out some of the specs and features. And then of course, we're gonna find out what it weighs. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you, stick around and let's get flowing. At the risk of another flow or hole joke, this is the new Trek Madone Gen 7. And it features that thing back there, which is kind of the most important part, or most drawing, I might should say, part of this bike, the ISO flow rear end. Now, Trek Madone has been around quite some time. It's their quintessential race bike. And in the last several generations, it's been their aerodynamic race bike. So. Above all else, aero is faster, and that's what they've been focusing on. But in this new generation, they've done a lot to save some weight, retain some compliance, make a comfortable bike, and then also have a greater fit range as well. And those are the things we get to talk about. But before we go too far, this being the Madone SLR means that this is made out of their 800 series OCLV carbon fiber. The bike just came out and I imagine sometime in the future we'll see an SL level which would run typically their 500 series carbon but that bike is not yet announced so right here we're checking out the Mac Daddy version. Now this being the SLR7 means that this is a Ultegra drivetrain DI2 drivetrain. They do make levels above this and then Trek also has their custom program the Project One system which we'll talk about a little bit more because in my opinion, this is the kind of bike that most likely you ought to order through Project One. This new bike being a 800 series OCLV carbon fiber means that this is the top end carbon, same carbon they use on their lightweight climbing bike, the Amanda. And Trek has done a lot of things in the front end to help clean this bike up before we talk about that ISO flow hole. So in the front end of this bike, they've changed up the cockpit system for better system integration, a connection to that front fork, which you can see is bladed and just, man, is this bike beautiful, the way that it's set up. I really am digging the way it looks. But here you've got a slenderized front end, still really stiff and strong with a strong cross section going to that down tube setup, but full system integration for cables and routing. And this bike, I should mention, is electronic shifting only. Now, the Madone carbon handlebar, it's gonna come in several sizes. And in fact, one of the neat things about it is gonna be its setup. So if we look here, the top bar is three millimeters narrower than when we come down to the drops. And the drops have a slight flare to them. You see how they come out? That means when you're sprinting and you're in the drops, you're not gonna have interference with the top of the bar. But then there's also that reverse rake on the carbon handlebar setup to help with its aerodynamics and fit. Now, when these bikes come fresh, it's coming with a full integrated bar width and stem. And that's one of those places where this bike being able to be done through their Project One system might be an advantage because then you can order it with your exact fit if your fitter at your bike shop gets the fit put together ahead of time so you know exactly what to get. And of course, because that's integrated, it then comes back into the stem setup where you can see this cap going to the back of the stem is gonna help with aerodynamics and lead the flow towards the back of the bike. Trek is well known for their cam tail shapes, which is where they do this truncated airfoil. It's really flat on the back versus a full length. And that gives it some of the performance of a traditional NACA style shape. But instead with that flat cross section, they're able to fit in to the UCI guidelines. And of course the UCI certification is really important if you're buying a race bike. Now through here, we do have the threaded T47 bottom bracket. And then we go out back through these nice chunky chain stays to your rear through axle. The bike is through axle rear as well as the front. And that brings us to the most important part of the new bike, and that's going to be the isoflow rear end. Now, in Trex imagery, sure seems to be doing something. Although, if you have a chance, check out Hambini's video. He's got some interesting commentary on what he thinks about this isoflow design. But the idea here 
is it's going to allow air to come through, help optimize some of the aerodynamics of the bike, but it's also gonna allow them to still get some of that comfort that came on the prior generation. Now, previous Madones have had something called ISOSPEED, which was a bearing interface that went in here and allowed the rear end to flex. Now that adds some complexity and some additional weight. And so by taking that out and allowing this part of the bike to be a cantilever design, allowing the flex of the rear end of the bike, they're able to save quite a bit of weight as well as complexity. And in fact, Trek claims that this new bike is 300 grams lighter than the prior generation. And they also claim the seat post that goes in is gonna have a wider range of fit, especially on some of the larger size bikes. Now, speaking of that, this bike only goes up to a size 62, although with that seat adjustment and with cockpit adjustment, they do say it can fit up to what a rider would traditionally be on a 64 centimeter size. But for most of us that are in the middle of the bell curve, this is gonna have plenty of fit adjustment. Although things like that seat post, all of that can be customized through their Project One system. Now this bike is going through Project One, which means that it's assembled in the US. Project One also allows you to do different paint options, custom setups there. But this being the SL7 version means that this comes with Shimano's Altegra DI2 system and carbon wheels. And for that, you pay $9,050, at least in February of 2023 and you're getting a pretty solid part spec, but really paying for the best level frame that Trek has on offer. And connecting that bike to the ground is this Altegra DI2 12-speed drivetrain. So we've got 12 gears in back, goes through that threaded T47 bottom bracket. It's all electronic shifting, which of course is important on a bike that's electronic shift only. And to help it slice through the air, is Bontrager's own Aeolus Pro 51. This is a 51 millimeter deep wheel. It's tubeless ready. It does come with these Bontrager R3 tires, which are tubed, but again, through Project One, you can spec the wheel, the tire, whatever you might want to come on the bike. Now, shifting is done via these paddles on the hydraulic shift and brake levers from Shimano. When you grab the brakes, it's clamping down on 160 millimeter rotors with two piston calipers. And with those features and designs, it is now time to find out what this bike weighs. And the actual weight of the Trek Madone SLR7 comes in and weighs 16.72 pounds, which isn't bad considering this is Trek's lightest weight disc brake Madone frame ever. Well, thanks again for joining me to check out this 2023 Trek Madone SLR7 Gen 7. It's a mouthful for a hell of a bike, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts down in the comments below.